Hi, folks. Uh, we're back. This is Patrick Barron. I am interviewing uh, Dr. Mark Thornton. And we were just before the break. Um, Michael McKay asked a very pertinent question uh, of you, Mark, which is, uh, well, which is worse, the boom or the bust? Well, this is a this is an incredibly important question because appearances are very misleading with respect to what is worse, the boom or the bust. Everybody likes the boom. Um, nobody likes the bust. Uh, all of the gain and all of the pleasure occurs during the boom. All of the pain occurs during the bust. But what Austrians have shown is that the boom is actually the problem. The boom is the cost, uh, the cause. And it's the boom where everybody is induced by the easy credit policies of the Fed to undertake long-term investment projects that are misguided, that are actually going to turn out to be bad investments. And so the mistakes actually occur during the boom phase when everybody's investing and spending money like crazy. And so that's where the problem is. It's the bust phase when all of these errors are subsequently revealed that is the cleanup phase. It's often referred to as the correction, where people have to readjust their plans and investments to meet the new reality of, of, the, of the bust phase of the cycle. So people would love to prolong the boom forever, and many people have stated that, that just you know keep interest rates low and let the party continue. Um, but that's really when, where the mistakes are made, and it's the bust phase where we actually get things cleaned up. You know, I want to jump yeah. in here again and follow up on this uh, a little bit more. Uh, you know, this is 180 degrees opposite of how it is presented by uh, Mr. Bernanke, Mr. Geithner. Uh, you know, our entire media uh, is oriented toward the perpetuation of this artificial boom phase. And they seem to be tone deaf to this notion that this is actually the problem area. This is where we actually experience the core cause of inflation. And it isn't rising prices that is inflation. It's the increase in the money supply through the artificial uh, means that are used by the Fed. Could you expand on that a little bit more, Mark? Well, I'd like to state you know, just briefly that the, the Federal Reserve itself and, and the government economic officials themselves actually like to present this whole thing as very much a mystery to the American people that you know that these are very uh, complex uh, phenomenon that only they can really truly understand and mm -hmm. so what their pronouncements are always you know the correct thing that they're never at fault and so they want to mask this whole thing because they're actually the cause of this boom bust cycle so they like to keep everything very mysterious and, and keep their own position as, you know, of the technocratic person who comes in and fixes the situation. So their, their guidelines and procedures are designed to, you know, maintain that facade. Yeah, Mark, uh, this is Pat again. Um, I think one of your and my uh, favorite books that first revealed this phenomenon was Murray Rothbard's America's Great Depression. And um, I wondered if uh, you could just speak a little bit about what Rothbard had to say about what really caused America's Great Depression. It was an incredible influence on me, I can say that. And I would recommend anybody who's serious about learning the reality of the economy to get Murray Rothbard's book, America's Great Depression. I think it's available for uh, the PDF is available on our site for free. But he really sets the record straight with regard to America's Great Depression on what caused it, how did it take place, and you know what the true reality, especially about Herbert Hoover. The great myth of Herbert Hoover is that you know that he sat back and did nothing um, with regard to America's Great Depression, when in reality he was uh, as, as activist uh, in terms of government intervention in the economy as Paul Krugman would be today. And so, you know, it's really an incredible revelation uh, to sit down with America's Great Depression and go through the detailed history. He presents the Austrian theory beautifully at the beginning and then just goes through a detailed history of how the, 
uh, Federal Reserve generated the boom of the 1920s, the the Roaring Twenties, and uh, you know what was going on during the boom, and then you know what brought on the bust, um, and then how Her Herbert Hoover tried to fight uh, the correction phase in the economy by keeping prices high, by trying to keep people in jobs that were no longer needed, uh, by maintaining high prices, um, and how that specifically created uh, the Great Depression out of what otherwise might have been just an ordinary business cycle. Yes, I, re I recall in um, Rothbard's book that Hoover actually held uh, a conference of major industrialists to get them to pledge that they would not reduce uh, wages of their workers and that Henry Ford actually pledged to increase the wages of his workers. And this is at a time when the money supply is uh, falling rapidly. So um, I see that we're Coming up, uh, we just have about another 45 seconds or so to the end of this segment, Mark. Um, at the, when we start the next segment, I wonder if you could talk about what some of the other economists are saying, specifically um, Fisher, who was, uh, what he was saying about the Roaring Twenties and the likelihood of, uh, of its continuation. So, uh, Michael, I'll turn it back to you, and uh, then Mark will pick this up at the end of the next segment. Great. Yeah, actually, I was hoping that uh, Mark would bring out this point about uh, Mr. Fisher and his uh, culpability role. So, folks, please stay with us. This is Radio Free Market. We'll be back right after the break.